All right. Um, yeah, we'll get started. So uh, this is about a project I created called Galactory. Um, this is an Ansible Galaxy server. This is for storing your collections and all of that. Um, uh, who am I? I'm Brian. I go by Brian Test on GitHub and IRC and most online things. Um, I'm in the uh, Ansible Steering Committee, maintainer of Community HashiVault, um, the Docs GitHub Actions, which uh, uh, Felix and I will be talking about after lunch, um, and, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so first I'll talk about Artifactory and what, what this is. Um, Artifactory is this product that basically has a bunch of different repository types um, to store all your stuff. Um, there's this concept of uh, local repositories, which are your, your things. There's remote repositories, which sort of uh, shadow a, uh, a remote. And there's virtual repositories, which are like a single endpoint that will combine both of your local and remote um, artifacts. Uh, it stores many types, um, this and a whole bunch of other stuff, and not Galaxy. Um, there was a request for it in 2016 before collections. That request is closed. There's a new request for 2019. It's gone nowhere. So, um, so talking about Galaxy for a moment, Galaxy means roughly three things in the context of this. The Ansible Galaxy command, um, the protocol of Galaxy, which is the communication between the client and the server, and uh, Galaxy servers themselves. Um, so of course we all know Galaxy, the public on galaxy.info.com. Um, and then there's a possibility to have uh, private Galaxy servers as well. So we want a private server probably for our own stuff, our internal collections, company stuff, that kind of thing. Um, and so there's Galaxy NG. And uh, this is, I believe, slated to replace the, the public Galaxy software. Um, it has lots of contributors. People pay to actually maintain it. Um, it is full featured. It's got a whole UI and search and authentication and all of that stuff. Um, and Galactory has none of that. Uh, so, so why not? Why not Galaxy NG? Uh, so there's pulp, which is the uh, actual software behind Galaxy NG, it stores artifacts of different types, um, content plugins for extending the types, um, and Galaxy NG is a pulp plugin. And it sounds a lot like Artifactory, but I already have Artifactory. Um, and that's really why I, I built this. So uh, to be clear, I'm not saying don't use NG. I'm actually saying you should use NG if you can. Um, but if you've already got an entire artifact storage system, I could see why you might not want to run another one for, for one repository type. Um, so that's what, that's kind of what this project is. Um, it's a very small thing. It implements Galaxy v2, um, including publishing. Um, and so the two main features are to store and retrieve collections, and then to also transparently proxy to um, an upstream Galaxy server. Um, this is meant to give something similar to Artifactory's virtual repositories, so you can kind of have one endpoint, get your, your internal stuff and the public stuff. Um, so the basics um, about the library, it's a Flask-based web application. Uh, it's only for collections. Sorry, role enthusiasts. Um, um, and it is really simple. It's, there's no UI. There's no way to manage collections in it itself. Uh, there's no built-in authentication um, or, or authorization, uh, but we can pass through that to Artifactory. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, there's no native TLS support right now. Um, that will probably change, but for now I'm basically figuring um, if you're not running this local, you'll probably put it behind a reverse proxy or a, a load balancer or something like that. 
So, uh, direct collection storage um, in Artifactory. This uses a, a repository type called generic. It just stores files and metadata. Um, and so for this, we really just have to put the tarball in, in Artifactory at some properties that um, Collectory will use to, uh, to serve API requests. Um, it also supports the publish command, so we can do publishes with the Ansible Galaxy Collection uh, publish, and uh, that will make it into Artifactory. Um, authentication, there's a bunch of options in Galactory for this. So, as I said, all, all authentication is handled by Artifactory, and so if you want uh, an anonymous um, Galaxy, you can make your repository an artifactory, allow anonymous reads. Um, you can configure Galactory with an with API key. Uh, that will allow it to do writes. That will allow it to also do uh, caches. Um, one other neat thing is like Ansible, the Ansible Galaxy command supports a token. Um, but the Ansible Galaxy command doesn't know anything about the token. It really just puts it in the request. So. Uh, we can exploit this by putting an Artifactory API key as your Galaxy token. That will get sent along in the request. Galactory can use that uh, to authenticate to Artifactory um, so that you can have sort of like per user uh, authentication. Uh, so the, then there's the uh, upstream proxy feature. Um, this will merge remote and uh, local API results, and that way you get a single single point of view. Uh, the API results are also cached in Artifactory. Um, this does retries to, to upstreams in case there's you know, some kind of connection problem or uh, something like that. Uh, the first time a collection is retrieved from the, from the upstream galaxy, it gets put into Artifactory so that it then basically becomes local. And um, that means it will be served directly uh, from there the next time. Um, you can also exclude namespaces uh, from upstream requests. So if you're proxying to public galaxy and you've got internal collections, even let's say your company's namespace, you can prevent those requests from ever hitting the upstream. Um, this is really helpful for avoiding uh, galaxy outages and, and 429 throttling errors. Um, I know there's a lot of galaxy outages and, and stuff. I think that's going to be much improved soon. Um, but the throttling errors are very real. Uh, I had a I was doing some CI for an in, in, internal collection, one collection, um, but the, the test matrix probably, you know, I think it spans six Ansible versions and two Python versions, and uh, that alone just died. I got throttled immediately from <laughs> Galaxy, um, just trying to install the uh, dependencies, so. Um, so, ways to run it. It's a, it's a Python package, you can pip install, you can run the module. Um, there's a container as well. Um, just to note that the container that is on the uh, repository is using the internal Flask web server, which you're not supposed to use in production. Um, being Flask, uh, you're really meant to use it with a custom, you know, a, a production WSGI server. I don't have any examples of that, but it's it's pretty easy to do. Um, how to configure it. There's a whole bunch of command line options you can give it. Every one of these options has uh, an associated environment variable, so you can, you can set things that way as well. Um, you can also put these same options in configuration files in a, in a couple of locations. Um, and some scenarios of how you might run it. So running it on the Ansible controller, this is actually how I ran it for a long time. Uh, this could be on your, on your workstation, this could be in CI pipelines, which is where I used it a lot. Um, if you're not publishing anything, and your repository allows anonymous access, you, you don't even need any secrets. 
and so you have no service to run and, and maintain with this kind of setup. Um, or you know you could choose to run it somewhere centrally, like in your company. You have a single URL for everyone. Um, you can use a setup where you have credentials in the service, um, but those credentials will not allow um, a client to publish, and so the client can still provide their own authentication. Um, and running it centrally means you can kind of have like an Ansible config file that just points to that. You don't have to do like dash s on every command or set environment variables to tell Ansible Galaxy where to look. Um, so I want to acknowledge um, uh, Sybil, who wrote the uh, Amanda, um, which was a, a very simple kind of Galaxy server that just read from files in our directory. Um, that's kind of what first inspired me to write this. And uh, JC Tanner has a project called Galaxy Mirror, which is a uh, proxy for going to Galaxy, and then it will uh, kind of cache all those on, on your local file system. So that's another um, project that might be of interest. OK, so I have a very, very short demo that, that hopefully will work. Um, as David said yesterday, I kind of like pre-baked this, you know, kind of uh, because Artifact already takes like three to five minutes to start, even with nothing in it. Um, and so I did already start that VM, uh, that container. Um, so this is uh, Artifactory. Um, I have this repository here called Ansible Collections. There's two collections in there now. Um, that I put in here uh, already. Uh, I will start Galactory, which doesn't take any time at all. Um, and we can see Galactory is running. Um, this is a, there's a little health check endpoint in there in case you need that. Um, you can set custom text in there. Um, so I'm going to take a look at this collections uh, endpoint here in uh, Galactory. So this is actually returning only those two collections that um, that we have in there. And if we looked instead at like we ask uh, Galactory for all the versions of Community General, it will give us that too, because it that is proxied to the upstream uh, Galaxy. And because I hit this endpoint, oh, um, I can come back and refresh the repository here and see that there's a cache. This is really just for API responses, so um, and this is because uh, the Galaxy protocol kind of has to make up, up several calls when you go to install a collection figure out the versions and, and all that. And so this was again to kind of avoid outages, but mostly throttling issues. And the cache is very configurable, so there's a bunch of options for that. Um, right, so let's try to do some commands. Uh, Yeah, so that's, you know, that's it. That'll, that'll install something. Um, we can also do, so let's, let's do an upstream one, right? We'll do like community general.
not, not very exciting, but um, going back to uh, Artifactory, we can see it is now in here. Um, and so the next time it is uh, installed, it would be pulled directly from here. But you know, from the command line, that is really transparent. Uh, oh, I also wanted to show the uh, properties, which are the metadata. Um, collection info is the one that Galactory actually uses, and the other ones are kind of in here as a convenience that's to help you be able to manage your collections within Artifactory, do searches or, or whatever. Um, maybe one more. I think I can do a publish. So this is the one I just published, and yeah. Uh, so real quick, I will show the, uh, I'll just show the, the Docker Compose that, of what I uh, launched this with. Uh, Artifactory one is whatever. Uh, the Galactory one, just showing like there's an environment variable, we can, we can set some option with that. The, uh, these are command line options, custom health check text. Um, I use this end file to put the, um, the super secret API key that I'm gonna show you all now. Um, but that's how I was able to publish you know, to Artifactory without passing anything. So yeah, that is, that is it. Um, any questions? Um, so the question was, uh, will there be any support for execution environments? Um, do you mean publishing yeah. execution? Uh, no, this is, I mean, this is just for Galaxy protocol. So just collections for now. Maybe it could be rolls at some point too. Yeah. It's mostly a silly question. Is there a role to deploy Galactory? <laughs> Um, there, there's a module. It's called it's called PIP. Ansible built-in PIP. Okay. <laughs> it's an Ansible based operator to install the time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this will still be needed once Galaxy NGs reach complete with community Galaxy? Uh, that's a great question. So the, the question is, um, will this still be needed um, when Galaxy NG is feature complete? Um, yes, I think so. But um, there's, no, there's no technical deficiency in, in NG or even current Galaxy um, that, that it, this is needed for, right? It's really all kind of uh, organizational, right? Like, I... We have a whole team who manages a bunch of tools, one of which is Artifactory, right? All of our artifacts are there, everything is there. Um, they're not going to run another one just for Ansible collections. Um, my team does not want to run a whole thing just for Ansible collections either. This is basically a middle ground of like, here's a very small thing, and then we can put our you know, what amounts to a couple megabytes or a hundred megabytes of stuff in with all the other artifacts. Um, because, you know, that has internal support, backups, page review, rotations, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, no, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not really a question for you, probably, but um, is it maybe possible to change Galaxy MD so it can use something else in Pulse and use that one with Artifact 2? I mean, um, that would give you the same UI, but um, 
Right. So the, so the question is, um, could Galaxy NG be changed to support something other than pulp? Um, it's true, I can't directly answer that. Uh, but what I can say is that uh, Artifactory does not have like a good plug-in system for this. So they're already not even extensible. I looked at that to see if maybe that would be a viable option. Um, so probably not. I mean, yeah. not for Artifactory anyway. Anything else? I think we can wrap up.